everybody, welcome back. Now this week we're talking all about geology and we're here in Antarctica on the Antarctic Peninsula. And I'm here with Dan, hello Dan. Hey Gav, how are you going? Good. Very good indeed. Good now, to see you. this week we're talking about the origins of this entire continent. It's the fifth largest continent on the planet. And Dan, I think I'm right in saying it used to be connected to South America and South Africa? It did, yeah. So many, many years ago, uh, over 60 million, up to 200 million years ago, uh, all the southern continents were connected in a huge mega continent called Gondwana land. Oh. Uh, and over time, it started moving apart. The tectonic plates pushed apart uh, and uh, started moving apart into different shapes of, of land, more like what we're used to today. Right. Uh, around 60 million years ago, though, was the moment that South America and Antarctica finally separated. Oh, right. Uh, and it's really interesting because uh, if you imagine the shapes of those two land masses, you have you know, South America pushing down uh, and Antarctica pushing up, and then right through the middle pushed this plate called the Scotia Plate, this, this big tectonic plate, uh, and it pushed them apart like this. And if you look at a map now of South America and Antarctica, you can actually see that shape of South America pushes out to the east. That's right, it's almost like they've buckled. They have buckled, yeah. Right. Okay. It's actually a great word for it. <laughs> um, and at the same time, right on the edges of that buckling, literally the buckling is happening of the mountain ranges. So mountain ranges are being pushed up, volcanic material is boiling to the surface all on the edges, and all these volcanic materials that we're seeing in the background uh, are coming to the surface. Right. It's a very dramatic moment, although it takes, you know, lots of time. Yeah. Now, there's lots and lots of mountains here, right? Yes. Uh, and we've been traveling around the continent. We've seen them everywhere. Am I right in thinking that these rocks around me here are made of um, igneous rock? Absolutely, yeah. Now, so, yeah. Where, where are we now? I mean, there's different types. Seems like there's a different type of igneous rock here to the one behind me. So, behind us, uh, are all these basaltic rocks. Right. And basaltic rocks are volcanic materials that came spewing out of the mountain in you know, high drama. Uh, and so that's all behind us. But we're standing on a slightly less dramatic rock, but I think much cooler. Yeah. Uh, and that is rock that was deep, deep, deep underground. In fact, uh, about six kilometers underground. Goodness me. Uh, inside the chamber of the volcano. And it cooled much, much more slowly because of that. Right. This stuff cooled instantly. It touched the air and cooled. This cooled super slowly. So the grains are really big, okay? Uh, and the color is much lighter. Right. So we're standing inside the old magma chamber. Are you telling me that as we stand here today in Antarctica talking about this, this is the remnants of an old magma chamber deep inside yeah, the Earth? Yeah, from about 60 million years ago. That is absolutely incredible. Yeah, it's wild. Now, the continent of Antarctica is a wild place. It's cold, it's windy, it's dry, it's the biggest desert on the planet, I hear. It is. It must be very, very hard uh, as an explorer in the early years coming to discover all of these things to be a geologist in Antarctica. Are there many geologists who come here and is there a lot more to find out? I think uh, geology is uh, the big question of Antarctica. So we, we're at a place on, on Peterman Island uh, where the Charcot expedition, the French expedition from the 1900s, uh, they came down here trying to figure out, amongst many things, was it actually a continent? Yes. Or is it just a bunch of islands suppressed by the ice, yeah. hidden behind that veil of snow? Uh, and so, yeah, it's, it's the big question. Uh, and to this day, geology is one of the main pieces of science that's done here. That's Absolutely. right. Well, everything is hidden under the ice. I hear there's a mountain range here that's actually underneath the ice. Absolutely. I read that this is the highest continent on average of any continent on the planet. It is, yeah. It's got an average of around 3,000 meters. Goodness uh, me. So straight out of the ocean, up to the pole, the plateau. It's about 3,000 meters, almost the whole way across. Right. And I guess if it was connected to South America, that means that the mountains we see here are also connected to the Andes. Yeah. So uh, interestingly, uh, the formation of the Andes is connected in the same event that formed these mountains. Right. Uh, and some of the rocks that we're standing on are actually called andesites. If you go down to the like, particular uh, scientific name of the rocks, andesites, as in rocks from the Andes. Right, that's unbelievable. Now it's filled with ice. There's ice everywhere. It's very heavy. It's yes. frozen water. It must be weighing down the entire continent. It is, yeah. Firstly, if this ice melted, what would happen to all the land here? So in Antarctica, uh, it's actually happening as we speak, of course. Glaciers are retreating, uh, less and less ice on Antarctica. If you took all the ice of Antarctica, uh, two things would happen. 
Firstly, sea level would have to rise, wouldn't it? Uh, because there is, you know, over, you know, 70% of the world's fresh water is on Antarctica, caught up in the ice. So imagine all that water suddenly in the ocean. Um, it would have a large effect planet-wide. Uh, but secondly, uh, the whole of Antarctica would actually rise out of the sea. Because right now there is so much weight on the continent, there's so much ice there, it's pressing down the land. And it's just like a, a cushion. Yeah. If you sit on a cushion, you can press it. When you stand up, it rises back up again. That's right. We're talking on a scale beyond what we can imagine, but it's just like a cushion. So if the ice melted here in Antarctica, I believe it's called isostatic rebound. That means that potentially, if all this ice melted, these mountains could raise higher than Mount Everest, potentially. Potentially, yeah, right. potentially. Now, the last thing I want to ask you is this. Yes, if the ice melts, it is shockingly bad for everything involved. All the ecosystems, the animals, the plants, the lichens, the mosses, the penguins we see behind me, they will have no home. But for children all around the world, how does this ice affect people who are living in Bangladesh, Nepal, India, North America? Yeah. It's very far away. And maybe sometimes we feel it's too far away, but if this melts, what happens to everybody on Earth? Uh, well, so we often think of Antarctica as being the weather factory of the world. So whenever you are feeling at home, that weather began here. Uh, so if we take all of our glaciers and melt them into the sea, uh, two big effects happen. Uh, firstly, uh, the amount of fresh water versus salt water in the ocean changes dramatically, doesn't it? Okay, uh, and the chemistry of the ocean changes. And so suddenly, uh, all the weather systems we're used to, like the monsoon, okay, uh, like, gosh, all the local weather you're used to, all of that stops happening. So if you imagine the crops, if you imagine the farming cycles we're used to in the world, finished, they're gone. Okay, and the second thing, of course, is, uh, is that the ocean would rise itself. And wherever you live in the world, if you live in a place that is within a few meters of the sea, your home may not be there. Goodness me. Uh, and these are real possible consequences of glacial change. That's right. Now this week, we want you to understand more about the geology here in Antarctica. We want you to do more research about Gondwana, how the continents shifted, and how they moved all over the planet. But the second thing we want you to do is start to understand what would happen if we didn't, if we failed to protect this continent. If the ice melts, Stan has told us, two things will happen. Weather systems will change, weather systems in your back garden, in your country, all over the world will change, affecting your lives and everybody around you. But number two, the ocean will rise, and I've read up to 60 meters in some places around the world. As a worst case scenario, that's right. And that means that our livelihoods, the people on our planet, would be in danger. This week, we want you to concentrate on this exact aspect. Think of 10 reasons why you need to start taking care of this continent called Antarctica and start to think about how you can influence a prominent leader in your area, in your community, maybe a politician or a really important person to take action in your community and work as a team to change the entire planet and save Antarctica and every single organism on the planet. Dan, it's been a pleasure. Thanks, mate. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.